Hello everyone, my name is Oquandia and I'm the Solutions Engineer at Electronique. Today I'm super excited to be giving you guys a in-depth tour of our Electronique Winter 21 release. I'm going to be telling you guys a little bit of information and new capabilities that we have incorporated into our Electronique Studio Pro. In our Winter 21 release system, we've introduced so many new capabilities from new integrations with emails, new structures when it comes to project structures, as well as the ability to go in and even have a little bit of Canvas options. So let's go ahead and jump in. Once you go ahead and get into your Electronic Studio Pro platform, you'll have the ability to go in and hit Authenticate. Once you go in and hit Authenticate, you'll be met with the login screen. Here we've added the ability to go in and use the Google Sign-On Connector to connect to your Google account. This will allow you to log in using your Google Sign-On and get connected into Studio Pro. All right, now that we're logged in, let's go ahead and jump into some more of the new capabilities. I'm gonna go ahead and start out with web browser. Here you see we have incorporated the Microsoft Edge native browser. So we now support Microsoft Edge, as well as the ability to be able to still use your other browser options. In Interface, we've added the ability to incorporate more languages. We now support English, Russian, Spanish, German, French, and Portuguese. We also have interface theme options. You have the ability to go in and change the interface theme from dark to a light theme. This is very useful for users who tend to work in well-lit areas. Once you go ahead and get into the canvas, a few more of the new capabilities that you may notice is the ability to go in and create a project as well as use playground mode. When you go in to create a project, this will create a project structure that you'll be able to see multiple elements and compiled files at one time. In playground mode, this is where you would have the ability to go in and create a single Neeks file. To get started with creating your projects, you would go in and hit create a project, name your project, choose the location of your project, as well as select the main file name. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it as main.neek. As you can see here, now there has been a third tab populated into the left hand side. This is going to be your project elements. Here is where you're able to see all of your elements as well as your JavaScript files. You also have the ability to see your logs and your screenshots, any of your terminal elements and your web elements. In your settings, we have also included project settings. This is where you would have the ability to go in and see your project entry point, which would be main.neek. You have the ability to go in and toggle through which browser that you would like to use regarding this project. You also can set your execution settings regarding this specific project. You will be able to add variables and view any variables that you currently have, as well as their name and value. You'll also be able to go in and change the interface language and interface theme of a specific project in the project settings. Jumping into some of the new canvas structures here, as you can see, we have added these two additions here. You have the ability to use the grid option. This turns on your grids, which will allow you to go in and snap to grid points. We also have auto layout. Auto layout will go in and have a snap to grid functionality. If there are no grids present, then it will do auto layout which is where it will organize all of the activities in a neat fashion. And an example of that, for example, if we're pulling something out here, and I take the grid lines off, I'm still able to use auto layout. Or in other words, if I would like to go ahead and keep the grid on,
it will still have the ability to snap to grid. In our email settings, we have now added a activity called for each email. What this does is it allows you to iterate through a series of emails in which you may have specified certain perimeters. Over here to your right hand side, this is where you'll have the ability to go in and set up that host login, as well as add a new account. You'll go in to add the services, whether this be Salesforce, Google, LinkedIn, whatever platform that you are attempting to log into, set your login as well as your password and click add to add that to your password management. You're able to go in and select the server settings as well as specify a date range. You're able to filter by status being unread only or starred only. You're also able to filter by content. When you filter by content, you'll have the ability to filter by subject contains, body contains, or by sender. If you need to go in and do any attachment work, you're able to go in and download the attachment, as well as search in certain mail folder names. You also have email limits. This is where you can go and set up how many emails that you would like to actually iterate through. And you're able to download the original emails and also mark as read. And last but not least, this feature that we have added is not actually an activity, but I would like to show you that we have added the ability to go in and automatically solve reCAPTCHA v2 CAPTCHAs. And what this is going to do is open up a URL to a demo CAPTCHA. Go ahead and solve the CAPTCHA. Wait four seconds after solving the CAPTCHA and then go ahead and hit submit. Let's go ahead and run this now. And as you can see, that CAPTCHA was solved. I thank you guys so much for tuning in to our Electronique Studio Pro Winter 21 release with all of these new capabilities regarding the for each email, the new interface options, the great ability to solve reCAPTCHA v2 CAPTCHAs, as well as the amazing project structure. I would love to see what you guys create with the Electronique Studio Pro system. Happy automation. Thank you.